I want to expand further on infinite height generation in my Minecraft clone. I want players to build freely in my voxel engine without any limit. From my previous video, I said that players shouldn't build too high in the sky. Well, as some people suggested, that limiting the build height will only limit the player's creativity. It got me thinking if players should have the freedom to build whatever they desire in the voxel engine. So I started making some changes in the world generation code to fit the idea of having an infinite build height in my Minecraft clone. In order to achieve this, I needed to implement stacking for all voxel chunks in a vertical direction. Latest versions of Minecraft have a chunk size of 16 by 320 by 16, which is a vertical column that is constant. However, my voxel chunks are 32 by 32 by 32, which makes it easier for stacking in voxel world generation. The chunks don't stack on top, instead it is a section of the voxel world which is limited. The code is very simple. We iterate from a given radius and an altitude depending on what Y level the player is at. Here's a difference between the previous code and from now. You can see nothing has changed except the removal of chunk terrain height condition. Next, I want to give the sky some reason for the players to explore instead of having a big empty space of blue continuing forever like void. I came up with the idea of sky islands that could be toggle as an option during world creation. These islands could contain unique treasures from the rest of the world and perhaps a gateway to another dimension which players can explore. The concept of implementing sky islands is very simple and doesn't require refactoring to our Minecraft clone. All we need to do is split the world in three world generation layers like the concept showed on screen and check what level the voxel chunk in order for the game to generate the islands. Here's the code used to generate the layers of the world using a column format, where build column takes in coordinates of x, y, and z, and y is the chunk of layer to generate. Then we check if the y level is greater than the max terrain height so we can start to generate islands without messing up the terrain. The same applies for caves and other generation types with a decrease y level. Alright, now let's go see the height level on the top, so we're gonna build up this is before i make the changes so i can show you the cap is at 400 blocks all right now we're at the limit as you can see the blocks at the top don't render and i cannot build no further i can build to the side of course but again the quads on the top don't render so we're going to change this and make the height infinite all right let's take a look at the sky oh boy we have infinite height um but we have a little problem where the terrain is repeating itself consistently. Um, it looks kind of cool, um, but this could make some really good sky islands if I could just shape this a little bit more better. But of course, this is not good because that means we are generating the terrain twice and it will be infinite consistently as we go up. Um, yep, see if I go up again, I can still break the voxels which is good all right let's take a look at the height generation now all right so we should fly up i'll turn on the coordinates um and yep okay it's generating up here i what i did i placed the cave noise values as the sky islands for now just the test of course i will probably change this all right we're at position 1000 we're in a, a thousand blocks away from the origin and I can still edit in place of voxels, which is really good. So now you guys can be able to build as high as you want. And maybe some like an oxygen level where you're required to go up like as you get closer to what is it called? Like a space almost like. Yep. Now you can see that in the sky. Of course, it won't be this much, but it'll be very rare to find sky islands with maybe treasures and stuff up there. But yeah, this is running really good. All right, let's take a look now. And if we look into the sky, we actually have little islands up there. Uh, it's not too common. They're more round. We could probably change it, of course, maybe a little bit more stretched out with some different octaves of noise that we can play around with. But you can be able to just imagine bridge between these two islands to make a base up in the sky. And if you keep going up, they keep on generating infinitely. Really satisfied at these results. And we'll maybe probably get some grass on top of these. All right, we are up in the sky, and as you can see, there's a little bit of a bug with the grass. I got the grass on the top of the island, which here's the island right here, but the grass kind of iterates up and creating this weird column 
on the islands. I mean, it looks kind of cool though, but I think we just need to just have one layer. All right, now we have some grass on the Sky Islands. And as you can see, these Sky Islands are just used as a demonstration that we have infinite world height generation. And there's the grass on top. But I think this is really good, especially with the different Sky Islands. I will have as a world option so you can be able to toggle it. But at least you can build to your heart's content in both directions, all directions actually. The next feature to add to my voxel engine is a starting point of a UI system. Since all games need a way for their players to interact with the game, I settle on something simple that is voxel-like using libgdx scene 2D UI framework, which I do recommend. For now, I won't show the entire concept of me programming the full UI. It is a lot of boilerplate code and would probably take me a thousand years to explain. The new UI system was indeed to simplify things when it debugging server to client connections. For now, it's not much but in the future i do plan on adding more menus to my minecraft clone all right here we find the new main menu where we have the single player multiplayer mods settings and quick game buttons but again if you hover over the buttons we have a nice transition with the green and we also have a display text also showing the version of the game and then we have a nice background of some stone or dirt and grass and if we click on multiplayer i redid the multiplayer menu again we have a text field where we can enter in the ip address towards the server and again we have these two buttons where we can hit connect and back and we have the same background as before i also changed the sky to black for a nighttime vibe and if i hit back it goes back to the main menu Next, we'll talk about voxel engine lighting and key optimizations towards the game engine. For now, we'll save that for another video. Here's my previous video if you're interested. Have a good one, everyone.